This video script was written by Ron Snow, edited for video, and I added some information on the state of the industry. As whilst Mizunor isn't someone whose work I was personally familiar with, his name was one that many fans of Piero shows look forward to seeing in the credits. This video is unmonetized and I urge others to do the same when dealing with subjects of this nature. On the 19th of March this year at Studio Piero, a director was taking a nap after having worked without rest for days, presumably working on the show's next biggest project, Boruto The Next Generations. That director never woke up, having worked as an episode director for 29 years and about to see a beloved project being helmed by one of his best friends come to life. His name was Kazunori Mizuno. Days later, Kazuyoshi Yaganuma and Kenichi Fujisawa, two animators that were working at the studio that day, announced his death on Twitter. The causes of death are still a mystery, but everything points towards heart failure from overworking and chronic sleep deprivation. Apparently he was having trouble dealing with his workload and decided to take a nap that he tragically didn't wake up from. So instead of just calling him the Naruto slash Bleach animator, let's talk about his achievements and the impact that he'd want to be remembered for. Kazunori Mizuno entered the industry as a 22-year-old production assistant at Studio Piero, and because of his incredible work ethic and talent, he was promoted to episode director after just one year. Soon after, he was even trusted to do his first storyboard work outside of Piero on the Tatsunoko IG OVA series, Yagami Kun's Family Affairs, where he worked alongside some of the industry's best animators at the time, like Yoshinori Kanada, and over the following years, he continued being asked to work on projects for talented people who recognised his ability and needed him on their OVA or TV series. But to top this off, the big opportunity came when Noriyuki Abe approached him to work on his new series, Yu Yu Hakusho, the anime adaptation of one of the most popular manga of its time. Its anime adaptation was highly anticipated and Abe reunited a team of young talented directors and animators to make it work. Throughout production, it became a competition to create some of the most engaging episodes and it was Kazunori Mizuno and Akiyuki Shimbo that really stood out with their unique approaches to compositing and a certain beauty coming from the use of angles and framing within their storyboards. After Yu Yu Hakusho ended and he'd finished directing the AIC OVA Kishin Core, he came back to Piro to work on Noriyuki Abe's next series, Ninku. Mizuno's episodes were some of the most standout within the whole Ninku series, where his striking boards presented a perfect opportunity for people like Yutaka Nakamura to show off his talents. Mizuno was constantly tested, being presented with opportunities to direct and storyboard important action scenes, and he proved himself time and time again. And so what do you do when you've got an impressive episode director? you give them a series. And so Mizuno became the series director on the sequel to Zoids, Zoids Genesis. But a strife with production issues and outsourcing problems, even with the talented team that Mizuno assembled, it struggled to reach its true potential. But like how Noriyuki Abe had given Mizuno chances, he did the same for his own staff, scouting out specific talent. And then came Bleach, 28 episodes, 4 openings and 3 films that can credit him as the reason for their stunning choreography and composition of striking visuals, particularly opening 10. And remember how he worked alongside Akiyuki Shimbo on Yu Yu Hakusho? Well, whilst working on Bleach, he took the opportunity to reunite with his old pal for Hidamari Sketch, Nanoha and the Monogastri series, developing an interesting style of layouts and colour design with flat shadows showing similar quirks to his Bleach openings. Having completed his work on Bleach, he joined the Naruto Shippuden project and was immediately put to work on episode 294, a part of the Chikara saga, showing off the strengths of the production's best staff. 
and with his prestige as a director, he became the go-to director for important action episodes, drawing storyboards that helped elevate his scenes to another level. His last episode was episode 499, the penultimate moment for the series, a goofy, light-hearted episode to end the storyline before the final episode finished off the cycle giving pass to a new generation that he didn't get the chance to see flourish as directors of their own right. This is another sad case of the crude reality of the industry. People are overworked and paid the minimum. The cases of Yuka Sugizaki, a 26-year-old animation director who works on Attack on Titan, passing away last year, and the A1 Pictures production assistant taking his own life are not simple cases of animators dying, but are cautionary tales about a possible future for the industry. The amount of anime being produced is increasing, and everyone's too busy working to ridiculous schedules to be able to stop for a moment and change things. Studios like Yufa Table, Kyoto Animation, Gohans and White Fox are making varying attempts to improve things by training animators and paying them the best wages they can, but there are industry realities that work against this. This isn't just Japanese work culture and it isn't just staff overworking themselves. Because of overscheduling and the need to get everything done ridiculously quickly, there's nobody there to stop them. It took a lawsuit against Studio Easter for background artists to not have to work unpaid overtime and one anonymous industry insider suggests government intervention may be necessary as it may just be the case that there's really nobody in the industry that can actually stop this once and for all. Thanks for watching the Kenapro Effects and a huge thank you to Ron Snow and remember to check out his blog for more industry insights.